Hey everybody, how's it going? Let's talk about your home recording studio. Uh, this is an exciting day for me. It is new guitar day, and I figured it might be fun to bring you along for the ride as I open this thing up and uh, play it for the first time. Let's waste no time. This is a large box. I don't think this will fit on camera, but let's see what happens. <laughs> I've never seen this type of packing before for a guitar, so I've got no strategy on how to get this thing out of here. Bear with me. Okay, moment of truth. Let's get this shroud off. Yeah, check that out. Hagstrom. And if you can just see it, the script here says Viking. So let's get this thing out into the world. All right. Ooh, yeah. Oh, ho, ho, ho. all right. It is a beauty. Now this was actually sold to me uh, as a super Viking and I'm a newcomer to Hagstrom guitars. So I didn't know a super from a standard from a hole in the ground. And as it was in transit, I started kind of asking myself some questions that admittedly I should have asked before pulling the trigger on it. But uh, so it was listed as a super Viking. The super Viking is a uh, Fender scale uh, instrument that has push pull pots uh, to do some coil tapping. The standard Viking, such as this, uh, does not. So this has the plastic uh, knobs on it. Super Viking has, it looks like nickel or steel uh, with a little engraved R, or I'm sorry, H on them. It's a Hagstrom, not a Rickenbacker. Uh, the Super has a white pickguard that says Super. Um, the standard here just has the uh, black pickguard that just says Hagstrom on it. Of course, we've got a, I like the uh, the bridge. It's nice. We've got our uh, couple of humbucking pickups here. And I really think that the crowning thing here, like one of the, not only just the gorgeous finish, uh, I'm just, I'm a sucker for this color of red, uh, but the little emblem here, let's see if we can get in close and take a close look. But the, it, like, it's something you would see on the front of an exotic sports car or something, right? <laughs> like that, that kind of coat of arms for a Hagstrom. Uh, and that's on this uh, trapeze tailpiece, which is just kind of cool art deco, that kind of offset to it. I love it. This is, of course, a semi-hollow, and it is semi-hollow, so there's the, uh, the, the center block that runs down the middle of it here. Uh, the F-holes uh, with that nice kind of little binding on it. We got body binding on the front and the back. And it looks like on the front here, it is one, two, three, four ply, maybe a four ply, uh, which you probably can't quite see. And on the back, it looks like it's just a single ply. It is a set neck, so no, uh, no neck plate here or anything. And uh, we've got a sticker to let us know these are made in China. The Hagstrom brand uh, retired itself in what, 1983, I think, and was resurrected in 2004. And ever since then, they're manufactured in China. Uh, man, my goodness, just overall, I really, really uh, like the feel of it. Let's uh, give the three-way switch a little, yeah, that didn't feel so great, but uh, yeah, it's fine. I uh, got our little H on there. Something's a little, a little loose on there, but uh, yeah, we can look into that later. Uh, you know, aside from just the direct inspiration from an ES-335, which is, you know, that's just a dream guitar of mine. I I've always wanted one, and once I started to price them, uh, I didn't want one so badly anymore. <laughs> to find one with block inlays, a slim taper neck, and uh, in the, the red color, um, yeah, they were running like between five and seven thousand dollars, and uh, I could buy a lot of Hagstroms for that, so <laughs> I went this direction instead. But yes, the block inlays were a big factor for me uh, in this one. Uh, I love that the, uh, that was another giveaway that this was a Viking and not a Super Viking, is the double block on the 12th fret there. But it's this kind of perloid kind of thing. I, I am not exactly sure what they're using uh, for the markers. But the fretboard itself, it looks like ebony, but it's it's some sort of composite material. So I'll be kind of curious to, you know, as I get to playing it, to kind of see what that feels like. So far, the neck profile I really like. And that was 
another big uh, decision in pushing me towards choosing Hagstrom over things like Epiphone, Harley Benton, Ibanez. But so far, I've got to say, yes, I love the neck shape. I absolutely love it. I'm very happy with that. That's always a factor in buying a guitar uh, before you've actually been able to touch it. You know, how does it feel? And I got to say, first impressions, I like it. Uh, any other thing to go over here? So this was bought as a B stock. And now that I see it in person, now I can see better. Uh, and I'm not sure if this is coming through on camera or not, if I can get the glare off of it. Uh, the pictures that I looked at it, I could see just a couple of little spots here, um, but it looks like, yeah, like this entire area of the headstock, it looks like something went a little wrong with the clear coat, uh, with whatever the, you know, it's probably a poly uh, coat, but it, it's just got kind of a milky haze to it here. The, uh, we got the very much Art Deco tuners here, very uh, different. I got a nice uh, emblem that, you know, just running my hand over this, uh, I'm guessing that this is like decal, you know, that's certainly not inlaid. So there's probably just like a, a thin uh, sticker or veneer or something on the top here that has this kind of decaled into it. But yeah, that looks really nice. Quick look at the back of the headstock. Just that traditional kind of Gibson style three and three tuners. Well, I think all there is to do now is get it tuned up, plug it in, make some noise. All right, I've got a couple of microphones set up. I've got one out in the room and uh, one right up on the amp. I'm, pl I'm playing this uh, into a Mesa Lone Star Special. And the only pedal that I've got turned on, I've got a Wampler Tumnus uh, turned on for just a little bit of extra something something. <laughs> Honestly, in all of the demos that I listened to, um, you know, so many of them are just using camera mics at a distance and eh. But I thought that the pickup sounded kind of muddy and like just not all that great, but really, um, so far, I like this neck pickup. I think that sounds pretty good. A little bit, a little bit muddy. You know, with a, with a chord there. But the single notes. It's a little dark, a little darkly voiced. So let's back off the tone and see. Back it off all the way. And just like every guitar demo, it's just going to be me playing pentatonic scales. That's <laughs> might as well come to terms with that now. Uh, it's, uh, honestly, yeah, it has just a sweetness to it. You know, it, it's not harsh and and brittle or anything. There's just kind of. Just, just very sweet sounding. All right, let's hear it on, uh, let's hear just the neck pickup. Or I'm sorry, just the bridge pickup. Single notes, yeah, kind of the same thing. Like the, the pickups are just like a little darkly voiced. Uh, so they don't have, they're not just, you know, bright enough to be shrill or anything. Let's hear like a big power chord.
right, what else can we do here before we uh, call it quits? I'm uh, on my lunch break for work, and uh, I've only got a little bit of time left here, so I'll keep this short. Uh, let's try both pickups here. You know, that's never been my favorite sound for an electric guitar. Let's get back to that, back to that neck pickup. That just sounds uh, just kind of sweet and round. And... <laughs> Upper fret access seems uh, really nice. I mean, I can reach it. My fingers are too fat to actually play those frets, but uh... but it still frets there. The notes don't fret out. Yeah, that's nice. plays great. I, I mean, I, I, it, it feels great. The, the Just the neck shape is uh, just immediately comfortable and familiar to me. I would say it's a little uh, thinner than the, the, thinner this way, uh, than the 60s slim taper neck that my Les Paul Classic has on it. Uh, as far as width this way, it, it, here at the uh, nut, it feels just maybe just a smidge wider than a Les Paul neck. And, you know, again, just a smidge wider up here. Of course, you know, up here on a Les Paul, you can't really put your hand around the neck anyways, because the body's there. But uh, the, the upper fret access is very nice. Just, it's slim and comfortable all the way up and down. This thing showed up in immaculate shape through the mail uh, in October in the US. And it came from Ohio. It came from a, what is it? A CA House Music. And I have to say, fellas at CA House Music, nice job, uh, nice setup intonation was spot on. The uh, the thing was almost in tune. The action seems set up really well. They said they had a uh, tech go over it before uh, shipping it out. Uh, you know, the, the mislabeled uh, listing, I'm not sore about it, but I figure I will contact those guys and let them know they have another one listed um, that's just a Viking that's listed as a super, as well as they have a couple of actual supers <laughs> listed as well. But I figured I'd just let them know um, just in case somebody not as... Um, forgiving, I guess, as myself uh, gets a hold of it and wants to raise a stink. I'm, I'm impressed. All right. I'm, uh, this is my first semi-hollow, so I don't really have much to compare and contrast it against. There are some uh, great videos out there. I, uh, I'll see if I can dig a couple of those up and link them in the description below. But for now, I think I'm going to hang this one up here. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my lunch break, uh, playing around a little bit, and then get back to work. Yay. All right, thanks so much for hanging out with me here, fellas. I think that will do it for me this time. I'll see you guys again next time.